Okay, so here is section 4.2. This one is all about the unit circle. So I don't know if you have learnt about the unit circle in the past. Um, you for sure did not with me if you took uh, pre-calc 11 with me. But the unit circle is something of importance and it relates to special triangles. So let's get into this. What are the purposes for this class? We are going to learn what is the unit circle, if you haven't already. We're going to use knowledge of this unit circle to solve problems. And we want to find reference angles because these are very important. Let's hop into this. So the unit circle is a circle with a radius of 1. And it is centered at the origin. So it looks like this. Here's the unit circle going around. It has a radius of 1. So its domain is from negative 1 to 1. Its range is from negative 1 to 1. And the radius all around this is 1. So in general, for a circle, you have this equation. So x squared plus y squared equals r squared. This is just, in, for any circle, this is going to be the equation for it. So for the unit circle, we have this nice equation. x squared plus y squared equals 1. And this is going to come in handy. And if you think about Pythagoras, you can imagine where this comes from. So we're going to use that to solve some problems. First, what is the equation of a circle with uh, the center at the origin, like the unit circle? But unlike the unit circle, we've got a radius of 5. So looking at this, x squared plus y squared equals 5 squared, and expand the right side, and that is your equation. Easy. Next one. What is the radius of a circle with this equation? Well. The 7.29 is r squared, given our equation, so take the square root. Now, why did I not pick the negative square root? Think about that for a sec. So we get radius equals 2.7. Because remember, when we take the square root, we would take a plus or a minus. But why would a minus not work in this case? Well, have you ever heard of a negative radius? That makes no sense. So you'd always want to have uh, the positive value of the radius. So this is the case where taking the square root, we're just looking at the positive. Try, so, try another example here. So we have a unit circle. We want to know what is the x value if the y coordinate is square root 3 over 5. So because it's a unit circle, We've got this equation, and we just need to solve for x. So expand out the squared, put the x squared by itself, take the square root, and we get that x is plus or minus the square root of 22 over 5. Now the question is, do we just take the positive value in this case, like we did the radius, or do we take the positive and negative? So if you think about our unit circle, if I've got the y-coordinate is this positive value, I actually have two solutions. Well, why is that? Take a look at this unit circle. I've got a positive x value on the right and a negative x value on the left, and both of those have the same y-coordinate. So I have two points. This kind of looks like a Spider-Man face. Okay. So this is your, this is why there can be two solutions in this case. Let's try another one. So we have a unit circle again. You're given the x coordinate. We want the y coordinate. And we're told the angle is in standard position and it terminates or it's located in quadrant four. So we use the same equation, solve for y squared, Take the square root. Notice this time I'm just putting negative. There's only one solution. And the reason for that is because it says that it terminates in quadrant 4. So it terminates in quadrant 4. That must mean that my y value is negative. There would also be another example, or another answer for this, that's in the first quadrant. 
up top with a positive y value, but we're told that we just want quadrant 4. So that's why in this case you'll take a negative. Using the unit circle. So here we're given a point in standard position and it is on the unit circle. We want what is the point on the terminal arm. So here, I know this is a lot of information all at once, it overwhelms your senses, but this is your unit circle. This is actually what I will give you on the test. It is going to be very handy. Normally, you have to memorize this. I'm not getting you to memorize it because I just don't. So in order to do the question, we first need to look at where is point 7 pi over 6? Well, here it is over here. So this is all the information we need about this. So it automatically converts into degrees. You can see that there. What is the point? Well, it's just simply the x and y value. So the position is negative root 3 over 2 for the x value and negative a half in the y value. And that is your point. Let's try this again at a different point. So we're looking at negative pi over 4. Now the thing is, you are not given negative angles in this. You need to figure that out. So one way you could do this is you could do 2 pi minus pi over 4 to try and get this angle. So it's this one here. So based on this, you can see the coordinates, not too bad. And we're going to do this again for a different example this time. So now we have a specific x and y value. We need to figure out what is the angle. So x is negative root 2 over 2, and y is positive root 2 over 2. So you need to look at your circle. If x is negative, y is positive, we're in quadrant 2. It's going to be here. So we get our theta is 3 pi over 4, and that's your answer. Reference angles. Okay, these ones are very important. The reference angle is the acute angle, acute meaning less than 90 degrees, between the terminal arm and the x-axis. And in this case, it could be either the positive or negative. So here in blue, you see the angle in standard position. And in red, your reference angle. Notice it's between the x-axis and the terminal arm. Note, reference angles are always positive. You're never going to have a negative one. And also note, when you are using your calculator, the answers for the degrees are always reference angles. So if I say for this example up here, I said what is the um, angle? If you were to use your calculator, you would just get the reference angle and you would have to add 180 degrees to get the angle in standard position. So this is going to come very handy. So determine the reference angle if the angle in standard position is 5.26. So here's our angle, actually drawn out, this is why 4.1 is important. Notice the reference angle is the red line here between the x-axis and the terminal arm. So to get that, we go 2 pi minus my standard position angle, and we get the reference angle is 1.02 radians. So things to remember for reference angles. In general, you've got this. So given whichever quadrant you are in, you have different equations. So in quadrant one, your reference angle is equal to the angle in standard position. Quadrant two, pi minus standard angle, and so on and so forth. And here are some graphs here to just kind of show this. The blue line being the standard angle and the red being the um, reference angle. So there you go. That is the um, those different tidbits on um, how you would use this with 
the reference angles. And this is going to become very important when we start solving equations in the, some later units or later sections in this. You'll need to know these things well and you, um, you have to memorize this. I'm, I'm not going to give you this on the formula sheet. So that is that. Again, reference angles are, are, are going to be very important, especially in the future. So you will want to get to know those well um, because you're going to use it very frequently and it's not coming on the formula sheet. So there is 8.2. Okay, so this lesson, I've got a treat for you. This one has to relate to everyone's favorite thing, which involves eating. The random fact for this lesson is that your tongue has taste buds that taste specific parts on specific, or taste specific flavors on specific parts of your tongue. So there is a part of your tongue that can detect sweetness. There's a part that can detect bitterness, a part that can detect salty, and I forget what the other one is but there's different parts that detect each type of flavor. So once you understand which part works for which, you can know the type of food and know where to process it in your mouth to get the fullest flavor. So there you go. Now you have an extra tip as to know how to eat your food properly because you've been eating wrong this entire time. 